Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop and welcome back to our introduction to woodworking series. So in this part, I'm going to talk about uh, joint making, uh, joinery in particular, and obviously I'll go into joinery and carpentry together and how they both complement each other. Um, so I, I've, I've made up a. Uh, most of the basic simple joints, now there's loads of variations of these joints just depending on the application but I have just made the simple joints themselves uh, and I'll show you them and I will tell you uh, what they can be used for and how they're used in the field um, and how they're used in combination, you, you know, joinery, carpentry because although they're the same thing, sort of, but they're both, you know, uh, different things. Um, so I let's get into it, guys. So I'm going to go for um, less difficult to most difficult. So we'll build it up. Um, we'll start with the, the easiest kind of joint up to the most difficult. <laughs> so the first joint is probably the the, the the most basic and the most simplest joint. It's probably the joint that um that will probably get used the most because it's so simple and it's so easy. Um, it, it's the butt joint. Now you can use this joint for you know anything. Essentially, you know you 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 glue it up, clamp it together. And then you whack some screws in there and that solid it'll definitely be solid and um, before i learned any um joints um i obviously used this for making boxes so it's a it's a really useful joint when you're first starting out and you're just wanting to make some things um the the butt joint you know um is definitely useful uh, and then obviously when it comes to the butt joint you've got you know edge to edge joining and what you would use this for is if you're wanting to you know make like a, a tabletop or you know cabinet work or something like that and you had loads of you had loads of long pieces um, and you, you would join them all together like that um, and that would create you know a bigger tabletop like this here like my table um, it's just all edge joint together and all glued together uh, and it's solid, you know what I mean? So I, as I said a minute ago, all these joints I'm showing you, there's, there's loads of like variations of them just depending on the application. Um, like this one here, this is a, again just an edge to edge joint but there's a, a tongue and a groove. And that will essentially just increase the surface area, making your joint more hard. Uh, just, you know, uh, a lot stronger. So, I uh, definitely that joint is of course going to be stronger than just button it together. But that joint takes more work. So, and I think that's what it comes down to a lot of the times when it comes to you know just 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 building stuff and making things. Um, it, it, it takes time um, to create certain joints and some people, you know, are not wanting to put in that couple of oils to make the joint so they'll just simply glue it and screw it together um, and then that does it. I, as I say, it, it works, you know, it, it definitely works but there's something about joinery um, something about joinery just in just uh, in the work itself uh, and the joint satisfaction that that you can have creating certain joints and then in particular having that skill. Having that skill is really cool, you know, um, because it's it's uh, something that's, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's something that's been lost, you know, um, especially the skill of doing it with your own hands. You know, there's so many different machines out there that can do it. Um, you know, there's a slot motor machine. There's uh, there's there's routers that 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 cut all these joints. So I, in my opinion, it's definitely a skill worth having. And 
it takes, uh, it does definitely take, you know, uh, practice and dedication and determination um, because it does take a long time, you know, it does take a long time and it will take you, uh, you know, some blood, sweat and tears to, to learn and practice and practice, trial through error and so forth to actually, you know, get a joint that's straight and square and goes together perfect. So, but I, the edge to edge joint on and, and the butt joint, very useful joints to have. Um, easy, anybody can use them, you know, so I definitely. So let's move on to the next one. And the next joint is the, the dado joint. Um, Pretty sure it's got different names, but what this joint is, is a groove cut in, a, like a panel. Let's say you, you you made a tabletop or a tabletop, a big panel using the edge joint, joint, joint them all together, and you were wanting to make a, a cabinet, you know, um, you would cut a big groove um, across the grain. You wouldn't cut it gone way the grain because you're just weakening the wood by doing that you want to cut it across the grain like that and what this is is to create shelves and that will create shelves and that will you know um, that glued in place um, and maybe a combination of wee brad nails for a nail gun um, or even a wee screw, or to be honest, you know, just that alone, um, we glue, uh, it, it would be solid. And as I said, this would be mainly for um, cabinets, um, I tables. It's a, a really strong joint. I think it's got another name as well, I'm not sure. I've always just known it as the dado joint. Um, but aye, another strong joint. And I've cut all these joints by hand um, just to show you that it can be done by hand. Now, I'm no an expert. Um, I ain't an expert. I, I, I don't class myself as an expert. What I can do and what I know is being through hard work, sheer determination and practice, practice, practice. Um, and eventually you will hone these skills um, and you'll develop these skills further because it's just like uh, it's like what I was telling you and the, the the hand tool one all this stuff is muscle memory you know just how much to push how much to dig how much to hit but uh, the dado joint another useful joint um, and I it's it's just like that but a lot of these joints, they can be used for other things. So I'm going to say it's, you know, it's used for this and it's used for that. But a lot of these joints can be adapted and used for different things. So it's just, it's purely a preference as to which joint you're going to use, you know, for what, what uh, for, you know, whatever application it is, for whatever it is you're building. So, aye, the dado joint. Next thing. Hey, what we've got here is the the lap joint, or it's really called the the rebate joint uh, here in Britain. And what I've used this joint for is for box making. It's a really strong joint, um, and it holds well. So obviously, you would have you'd have two sides like this, just a notch, a groove cut out. And they would go in the way like that. And that that creates a really strong joint. It does. Um, and now, most of the joints that I'm showing you, they're all sort of variations of one another. A good few of them are anyway. So, you know, one joint will look like the other. Other joints look similar. And it's just because all joints in their essence have been developed along, you know, alongside each other like that. So... Um, in the sense of joinery, as I said at the beginning, joinery and carpentry sort of evolved, you know, the, like together, because, you know, the the joiner, he'll be in the workshop creating all these joints, 
gate to the carpenter, the carpenter will be out in the field, in the house, putting up the frame of the house, you know, so it's like, both complement each other, um, they're both the same, but they're both different in the sense of, you know, the, the specialised skills they've both got, you know, so, um, but I basically the same thing to me, and of course, you know, I've all got opinions, they are, they are specifically different, but yet the same, I know, you know, it's the way I see it, you know, um, but I so, again, you've got many vari variations of this joint, um, you know, you've got, obviously this is just a simple one, but, uh, but, but yet you've got a mitered version, where essentially it's you you just got a you know a 45 degree cut here and it would join up with another 45 degree cut here with a wee step and that would go together um and then you would uh essentially hide that bit there and it would just it would look like a mitered corner 45 degree um and it would create a really strong bond so hi man also with this joint as well um, if you're making a box with it, you can use this same rebate joint here to create your lid and your bottom. You would simply, you would simply do the rebate joint all the way along it. Um, obviously, when you've got the the right size for the bottom, then it's simply slide on. Uh, or again, you, you could do it for a lid as well. So it's a very versatile joint and um, very useful joint and what we've got here is the the half in joint is called no <coughs> excuse me no all these joints that i'm going to show you i know how to make these joints um but i never necessarily knew what they were called like this one here i actually had to look up what it was called <laughs> Um, I, cause I, I didn't know what it was called. I knew how to do it. I knew what it was for, but the name of it, I was like, mm, what is that name again? Like, bye. This is a half in joint, and this is essentially uh, a, a a piece of joinery that would be in a timber frame, you know. Um, so uh, you've got that that cross section there, uh, and then you've got a kind of the T section. And then the, the end section, you know, so all these joints here in combination would create, you know, a timber frame. Uh, it's not a joint that I've used, really. Um, it's not. I did use it when I was making a wee model house. Yeah, that's how I know about it, but aye. If you're making your own timber frame house, then aye, that's the joint you want to know about. <laughs> I guess a useful joint just depending the application look that's the cross half joint and that's the, the T joint and then the corner joint right, right. and what we've got here is your mortise and tenon joint <coughs> and the mortise and tenon joint again obviously you're going to find a uh, mortise and tenon uh, in your timber frame building but it's also a uh, uh, essential joint for when you're making tables and chairs um this one here is the the through Mortis and tenon joint, which is, is you know, the, the description is in the name, you know, it, it, it goes right through. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, and then this one here is a, a stubbed one or a stopped one, which essentially it just like, it, it stops like halfway through. So all these have got their different applications, just depending what it is you're doing, you know. If you're building a table, um, you're building the frame of the table, then you're not going to want um, 
you're not going to want to see that at the tap or even if you're you know if you're building the side frames the legs you might not want to see that come through um, and there, there's loads of variations of this you know, there's one that comes through and then you lock it down with a wedge there's loads of variations of this one just depending on the application you know you've got your you've got your double mortis and uh, your double tenon like that where, where there would be two and you've got your your twin one or it would be that way but and you'd have two there and you've got your your wedged one look as i said it would that would come through and you'd have a wedge there and um, you're pinned as well but essentially you've got like loads of fingers here and um, so i there's a uh, there's just depending the application and what it is that you're doing whatever joint you're going to use and um, but i mortise and tearing joints are obviously you know one of the kind of keystone uh you know cornerstone as as you would put it when it comes to joinery carpentry you know the you're, you're going to find mortise and tenon on timber frame buildings roofs everything and anything tables chairs cabinet uh, frames everything and anything you'll find these joints I've just made that one go right through. Right. The next one is the bridle joint. Now, I guess the bridle joint is sort of like the mortise and tenon joint, um, only it's at um, the edge. You know, um, again, you know, you'd find these joints on tables, chairs, boxes. I man, you'd find that joint in a lot, a lot of places. Um, useful joint, obviously, but more than likely, you're going to find it more on like kind of tables and stuff. Also, a good one for this joint is picture frames. I think that this is a a pretty common joint for when you're making picture frames eh? all these joints they've all got their place in the workshop and this and you know when it comes to building small kind of things like that like um again there's there's uh, quite a few variations of this or not, not even really variations but just in the placement you know like uh Cause you, you could have this bit here in the middle and it would create like a kind of T, kind of T joint, you know, um, by the bridle joint. And the next one is the, the dovetail joint. Um, no. The dovetail joint itself, people say that this is the kind of hardest joint to make, um, but I don't think it is. This was the first joint that I started working on, so you know this is the the joint that I'm you know best at making. Um, the rest of them are a wee bit kind of hmm, iffy, you know. But I I I started making this joint because obviously I was making boxes. And I just wanted that kind of handcraft look. So the dovetail joint for me, but is probably one of my my favourite joints. Um, just for just for the way it is. Again, you, you know this boxes. Um, you'd find it on you know table frames. I don't know if you'd find this joint on you know a timber frame house. I don't think you would. Um, but I you'd find it in drawers, cabinetry, uh, cabinetry work. Definitely, you, you, you're going to find it in drawers. Um, so it's like, it's, it's like I said, but at the beginning, when I, when I first started this, all oh, woodworking, whether it be joinery or carpentry, um, it's you're starting off by making a box, you know, um, and that box becomes more sophisticated 
just uh, just as your skill rises, um, and in the sense of um, what joints you've got in it, how complex the build is itself. But it's always a box, you know. Bye. The dovetail joint is probably my favourite joint, and it's a joint that's probably it's probably one of the hardest to make. the the uh, The next one, I think, in my opinion, is the hardest joint to make by hand. By hand, anyway. All these joints can be made by you know machine tools, handheld power tools. Um, pretty easy, you know what I mean. But it's uh, it's that skill needed. To do it by hand and i believe that you know that's the skill that's being lost because of machine tools so definitely something that wants that you want to practice and get good at so we'll move on to the next one the last one which is the the finger joint or box joint um i I think that this is probably one of the hardest joints to make by hand anyway. It is probably one of the hardest, I think, you know, because you, you need to be so precise when you're cutting this. Um, and again, this is this will be good for um, own boxes. Um, when you're making frames for tables, chairs, you could apply this joint, you could use this joint. But it's a joint, you know, for making boxes, cabinets, drawers. Same with the dovetail. That's what these joints are probably more for than anything. Uh, and I said, I think this is probably one of the hardest ones. That's why I left it to the end. <laughs> I can make the dovetail joint pretty easy without any gaps, but this one's just a wee bit harder to do it. Um, aye. Bye. So I'll quickly go through them again. I'll show you them. Obviously this one is just the butt joint simple effective joint and then you've got the edge to edge joint simple butt joining to create uh, tables or boards uh, panels and obviously you've got the one with the uh, tongue and groove um, again that just creates the surface area creates it's a lot stronger Uh, the, then we've got the dado joint, which I, I, again for shelves and things like that. An R strong joint, cutting a, a you know across the grain like that. Remember. And we've got the rebate joint or the lap joint, which again that's a versatile joint because it can be used to make lids in that as well rather than just you know the like joining in box it can be used to make lids and the bottoms of the boxes then we've got our half and joint again you know this is uh, something that's used in uh, making like timber frame hooses and stuff I'm sure there's other uses for it but i And we've got our mortise and tenon joint again. One of the most popular joints in woodworking is the mortise and tenon. You know, seats and tables and like uh, timber frame hooses and that you find us on. So that's the through one right through. And then it's the stubbed one, which is a more difficult one because you're not taking it right through. And another variation of the mortise and tenon joint, the bridle joint. Another useful joint. Can you make tables, frames, picture frames? Aye. 
Then my favourite joint, which is obviously the the dovetail joint. So again, I I really use this joint for uh, making boxes and that, but you can make you know drawers and frames and that with this. Very versatile uh, joint and. Your imagination's the limit when it comes to what you're going to make and use this joint with. And then the last one, and most hardest in my opinion, is your box joint or finger joint. This one here. You can you see I've a couple of wee gaps there. Look. But you see, see, even when you're doing joinery, um, even if you do leave a couple of wee gaps like that, see when you glue it together, the glue will will fill the wee gaps. Uh, and then a wee trick but is that see when you've glued it, just get a wee sand, just get a wee uh, quick sanding and that will fill any wee gaps that you get. Uh, so I, there we go guys. So there we go guys. That is, you know, majority of uh, the kind of joints that you'll find in the western world now as i said there is a uh, there's loads of variations of the joints just depending on the application but they are the 90 percent of the joints that you'll that you that you'll see in the western world is the joints there now as i said there's there's uh, loads of different applications for you know what joint you'll use when you'll use it and what it will be used for but it's important just to practice and learn these joints. I I think it is anyway because it's something that's uh, that's getting lost to you know machine tools. You know, we'd we'd rather just you know rather than spending tools doing a joint. You know, we'd rather just quickly whip out with a machine. Uh, and there's great satisfaction to learning this skill and learning it successfully and being able to you know create a joint without any gaps and actually creating it so it does its job you know the joints were all made uh, with the idea of being you know um dry essentially so you know years and years ago before we had the kind of modern glues we would use it all dry and um, especially the mortise and tenon joint you know there's a uh, there's quite a few variations of the mortise and tenon joint and um, we you've got one that you know will come right through let me just get it the new so you've got one here this is just the through one you've got this one here but where the actual tenon itself would come right through and you would put a wedge in that way or uh, the actual mortise itself would be wider and you would drive wedges into the tenon and that would open it up getting a really strong mechanical fix um, so I, the the joints in that way are, are, are fluid, you know, you can take the joints as a basis and develop them yourself, you know, come up with other joints like that. No, it's, it's not easy, but it's a, it's good, it, it, it's a really good challenge and it really gets your brain going, you know. So I hope that you have learned something for this, guys, and been inspired to try to join it yourself like that. It's a really handy skill to have if you're making... Uh, if, if you know if you're into woodworking and you want to make you know tables chairs furniture cabinets anything like that you will need to use the joints to to create a successfully strong piece now as i said you know the first joint i showed you the butt joint the edge to edge joint you can get away with making tables chairs cabinets weigh that joint as long as you're using you know screws as well you know glue and screws that sort of replaced them <laughs> you know the traditional joinery like that you know but you can get away with doing it and if you find it really difficult you know to create the joints then it, then it's a good place to start you know if you just want to get your your horns you know dirty and you want to make things like that then, then, then it's an acceptable joint to use you know many many people use it because sometimes the joinery itself can take more work than the actual building of things. So it's entirely your choice and your preference as to which joint you use. Because as I said, they're very versatile, the joints, you know. You, some people maybe use mortise and tenon joints, you, you know, to make the frame of a table. 
Whereas some people will use the dovetail. Uh, you know, it's it's just entirely your choice and what you want. That's the freedom when it comes to woodworking. That's the joy when it comes to woodworking. Um, you get to choose how you create it. So I hope that you have enjoyed this series so far, guys. In the next series, we're gonna be we're we're gonna build some things. No, um, I'm thinking that we'll do a couple of builds. And the first one that we'll, that we'll build is we'll make a wee woodworking mallet. Because when it comes to woodworking, you need a strong wee mallet for Dane joinery. So that's what we'll make. We'll make a, a, a nice, simple wee woodworking mallet. Um, and then we'll maybe make, in the next part, we'll maybe make a, a wee tool holder. Um, maybe a tool holder for your chisels or for your planes or for your uh, your clamps, something, we'll, we'll, we'll make something, so if you're somebody who's watching this and you're interested, then why don't you leave a comment and tell me what, you know, you'd like to see me build, and then you can build along, um, and then maybe on the next part again, I think I'll build three things, uh, and on, on the third part, we'll build a week in a box, just a nice simple box, uh, with some simple joinery, now, whether you want to join a lang uh, in the joinery like that it is entirely up to you like that but we'll work together and we'll try and build a nice wee box that you can be proud of right so cheers for watching guys uh, i appreciate everyone who's who watch and i hope that you're learning and uh, you've gained for this uh, series um, and if you're new here no subscribed hit that subscribe button as you know 90% of the people who view my videos only subscribe so it costs you nothing and I greatly appreciate it, it helps the channel grow, hit that button, leave a like, leave a comment, tell me what you're thinking alright, so I'll see you in the next project guys, or the next video, take it easy and God bless guys, and build some, or practice your joint making, <laughs> see you later guys.